gonna pause while while we let people log on. Um, welcome to our Media 101 little workshop thing. <laughs> Oh, wait a little, a couple minutes. Uh, I did. Oh, wait about five minutes. Let people log on, check it out. I made it purple for um, Generation Ratify. Excited. Thank you. I liked I liked the theme. I wanted to be like you know, techy. Um, I was like, what can you? How can you make media into a theme? Hmm. <laughs> I'll wait about five minutes. Let people log on. See what happens. And we'll get started. Um. <laughs> I'm glad we're going to be talking about a lot. It's going to be a lot of information packed into a short amount of time, and hopefully, you enjoy it. Hopefully, um, you learn a lot. But yeah, it's all about media, all about talking to press, all about all this scary stuff. I feel like media isn't talked about enough, or um, people don't quite know. Um, how to talk about it, how to further our movement through talking to media. So excited. Yeah. Um, you're gonna wait a couple, couple uh, more minutes, let people hop on from the last, the last call. I know these things are back to back to back. Um, and uh, thank you for bearing with me through this whole this whole thing. Um, hopefully this is this is fun, engaging. Um, please feel free to put any questions you have in the chat as I go through this. And then I'll leave some time for questions at the end. We're gonna have a lot of discussion. Um, and I'll kind of show you examples. And um, yeah. Um, um, uh, so as we get started, I'm going to wait, the last event's running a little bit long, so we're going to wait a little bit more, but, um, as we get started, I want to start off with a land acknowledgement. Um, though we are gathering and we're here virtually, I really want to acknowledge the, um, the land that I'm on um, currently is the land stolen from the Massachusetts people. Um, and I encourage you to pop, we're gonna pop a link in the chat that shows you where, what the land you are, whose people they were stolen. Um, uh, uh, sorry, but uh, what, what the land you are um, is called, on is called. And um, I encourage you to please pop that into the chat so we can, um, honor that um and i really um encourage you also to take some time i know there's a gap in the day after after this um little summit meeting but um take some time research um the people whose lands you are on and um try and donate maybe or try and um support um efforts to help indigenous communities um, as we get started, I 
would love to know uh, what are some of your favorite things that you've, um, I know we've just gotten started on our first full day of events, but um, what are some things that uh, you, you've learned? What, what's, what are you loving so far um, overall? You can pop that in the chat too, or just speak up. Bob Ross, nothing beats Bob Ross. Oh my goodness, lobbying, yes. The, oh my goodness, the LGBTQ panel, oh, gives me life, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, well, I hope I can live up to, 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 to all of that, but um, uh, no, Bob Ross, LGBTQ lobbying, everyone um <laughs> movie night oh my goodness the movie night i'm this whole weekend is just full of so many events that you're gonna learn so many different things and um yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be great it's gonna be a time uh for sure um all right as we get settled in i think i am gonna start off Oh, the first event. I am so happy to welcome you to GR. If anybody, if it's anybody else's first uh, a summit event, pop that in the chat. And oh, thank you. I, I feel it's my power blazer. Um, but yeah, I'll be keeping on a, an eye um, on the chat throughout this um, little presentation that I have ready for you. Yeah. And um, also, please just feel free to just... <laughs> feel free to just um, also speak up if you have a question. I'll leave some, some spots for questions. But yeah, I think I'm, I'm gonna um, go ahead, get started. Um, thank you for the fit, and I am, um, yeah. All righty, so I'm here to talk to you about, I have a fancy title, I'm like from the brainstorm to the front page, Media 101, but really it's all about media relations, which is talking to press, because talking to press and talking to media can be um, really what um, can propel a movement and propel an organization and propel a, an advocacy group from being doing local efforts, which is amazing to a, a growing on a national scale and really, um, not all I like to say, and I've, I say this a million times a day, but it's not about making you great that you already are. It's about making you known. And um, yes, so I am uh, going to go through, take you through the whole process of media relations um, and um, taking you and I uh, welcome to the people who are just joining. And um, yeah. If you have any questions again, I like to, I really want this to be more a conversation. And I know you've been talked uh, talked to a lot, <laughs> a lot so far today. Um, but yeah, I think I am gonna roll over, get started, and move slowly so more people, as more people join us. Um, but so how does this work? How does it work to just go and you talk to media, talk to um talk to outlets, get into, get on the front page, right? So before you start anything, what you want to do is brainstorm, figure out where you fit, figure out where you want to be, figure out um, who you want to be talking to. And then next up you go pitch, you pitch to the media, you, you tell them, you tell them your story. And then finally, when you land the story, when you are able to talk to the journalist, now what, what do you do? So that's the process that you go through. And that's the process I'm going to take you through throughout this, um, presentation. Um, so to start off, to start off, um, our journey together, when you are choosing where you want to be, so picture where you want to see your face, you want to see your organization's face, you want to see your message, you want to see GR, you want to see the ERA being talked about, picture where you want to be, right? And overall, we like to think, ah, like for me, I, like, I want to be on the front page of the New York Times, I want to be on the front page of the Washington Post. And yes, that's amazing. But also, you want to look at a variety of sources, a variety of outlets, a variety of publications. And um, because what you wanna do as an organization and as a person is you're trying to reach a specific audience, right? So in, in, 
looking at uh, whose front page you want to be on, um, you want to think about, okay, who is it that I want to reach? And sometimes those smaller magazines and those smaller publications are going to reach your audiences more effectively. So um, you want to look at, okay, who is this publication reaching? So in terms of, of, of viewing audience and thinking about that, um, you can think of, okay, four generation ratify. Actually, as we start out, right, um, I'm going to be using GR for as a lot of examples because I really want to, this is a lot of stuff that can go over your head and it's, I know it takes, it took me a long time to, to be able to understand. So I'm going to be using GR to show a lot of examples. So in the chat or just pop up, speak up, can somebody put in our mission, what, what we're all about? Can, um, I would love to hear if, if in a word, when you think of Generation Ratify, when you think of the ERA movement, what do you think of, um, and pop that into the chat for me, please. And so as those, those flow into the chat, I know for me, I think of equality, exactly equality for all, educate, advocating, empowering, yes, our youth more progressive, intersectional, yes. So these are all things that interest specific audiences. So um, we want to think, okay, so I see in the chat, we're fighting for intersectionality, we're fighting for the young people's feminist revolution, right? So uh, the audiences that we want to look for are places that are catering to young people, and that are catering to um, that uh, people who want a more progressive United States. But then also, we want to think about, okay, <coughs> who might be interested in what we're talking about but doesn't know about us yet so this might be people um who know about advocacy youth uh, who want to get involved in advocacy advocacy but just don't know how so you want to look at general youth youth um publications and stuff like that so it's all about taking that that um who we are as a whole and, and trying to see okay how does that fit with different audiences and then seeing who whose publications whose outlets who's talk who what journalists are talking to those people that we also want to talk to next up you really really want to focus on the organizations your organization's attributes and how that connects with the publication's values so you want to think okay i'm thinking new york times i'm thinking washington post i'm thinking all these things right what do they value? How are they representing these different organizations that they're talking about? So, um, for example, for Generation Ratify, we are fighting for a more progressive and um, united society. And so, uh, as, as I saw in the chat, but, and so for us, we would look for, rather than looking for an organization, um, a publication that values more conservative values, we would, we would look for one that's valuing more progressive things. So, um, in that sense, we really, really want to focus. You want to be sure that by by connecting with a publication, you are connecting yourself and your organization with them on a deeper level. So you want to make sure that you are being represented accurately and that your message that you want to get across is really, really being told because that's at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is tell our story. And then after, um, you also want to look at the types of media that you are talking to. So again, I keep saying, I keep repeating Washington Post, New York Times, I don't know, I feel like I read them this morning to the top of my head, but um, those are very typical publications. But then you also, there's a multitude of different types of publications you can look at. So we have the straight newspapers, we have magazines. One of my favorites is Bitch Media, fun. Um, I'll pop your favorite publication in the chat, honestly. But the, um, but, uh, in addition to, to publications, uh, you want to uh, think about podcasts, think about radio shows, thinking, think about um, all of this and <laughs> the onion, I'm dead. Um, but think about <laughs> all of this and, and then take that and combine it with the other varieties. So you want to look at the audience, the values, and then that type of media. And then you get very very specific things like the, a Gen Z feminist educationally based so college radio station pitch them and those things exist you can find your, your niche and you can find your um, where you want to be so really 
yes, you want to focus on those big ones, but also find that variety. And so now we've talked about all of these different, these different uh, news sources. We've talked about um, all of these different publications, but like, how do you organize that, right? This is all in the air right now. This is just where I want to be. So next up, um, I, you, you would take, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how, but you would take all of this and you would take um, uh, where you want to be now that you know what the kinds of places you want to be and you would organize it in something called a media list. Now PR people, including myself, I know, like to throw around huge like terms to make us sound smart. Not that smart, but make us sound smart. And so, um, so yes, it's called a media list, but really all it is is a glorified spreadsheet. So a media list is what, um, you can use to organize and collect information on journalists that you want to pitch and people that you want to talk to and the places you want to be. So I'm going to show you an example in a second, but overall, you want to um, take, um, you would take all the information that you learn about a journalist, all the information that you learn about different um, outlets, and you would put it in this spreadsheet. I like to use um, Google Sheets. I made a little, I wanted to make a, a pretty one here, but there's templates all over the internet too. So those are really cool. But you'll notice, um, again, it's all focused on um, collecting that information. So on a typical um, media list where I would collect that information, I tend to put the out, well, you should put the outlet because you should know where you're pitching, the name of the person. This is an industry standard, but I like to put it to make sure I'm using the right pronouns for a person. Person, so I'll put their pronouns onto my media list, um, their contact information, um, the previous mention, so where they previously, pre pre wow, previously mentioned you, your chapter, your organization, um, and then uh, the notes, uh, which I'll head into, and then the angle, which we'll also really get into. But um, overall, uh, yeah, you want to, it's just the basics that you need to know about a person. Sometimes people will also pop in um, the last time um, they contacted them and stuff, but it just, what makes it easiest for you? But this is just a simple, simple one. And in terms of finding contact information, right? You're like, how do I contact these journalists? They're all over, they seem so high up. It's not, I promise, it's not too hard. I know, I like to joke that, um, um, PR people can kind of be sometimes professional internet stalkers. Now I know I know how that sounds, but like think of like if your friend has a crush on somebody, you want to find out all their information. This is this is what I do for a living. So um, essentially, you're trying. Um, you want to check social media. They usually have their um, emails in their bio, as well as bios on the um, uh, the publication's website. You can find. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can find their emails there and also Twitter. Journalists live on Twitter, so that can be another way. And then when you go out and contact them, it, it can be done in a variety of ways, but that's, that's um, email is usually the, the most common. Um, and then once you have all this information, you want to focus on your notes. Now, the note section is a little bit more comprehensive. It can, um, for me, when I pitch and when I email journalists, sometimes I like to add a little bit more of a personal aspect because at the end of the day, these people are people and it, sound, it feels kind of scary. It can feel kind of scary to reach out to them, but they are people at the end of the day and they're just trying to do their job. And so I like to add a little bit of fun sometimes, depending on the person and depending on the organization. So you want to match the tone of the organization that you're pitching. And we'll get a little bit more into that in a little bit. But overall, um, I know once I was pitching a journalist that I saw on her Twitter, she really loved Disney. So I put a bunch of Disney puns in my pitch. Now, I, with the brand that I was pitching and the organization that I was working with at the time, now that fit with our voice and that fit with, with the, the, the way we wanted to portray ourselves. Um, but um, overall, just adding that personal aspect, I found a journalist that really liked pasta, so I put a pasta recipe in there. But on, on, you don't usually do that, but that is, that's something you can do. Also for notes, you'll put anything about how, um, um, how they work and, and how their, um, uh, their publication factors into uh, the stories that they write. So this is, 
And this will set you up for creating your angle, which we'll get to in a little bit. But in your notes, you want to write what beat they work for. So a beat is kind of like the type of stuff a journalist will write about. So if they write for a sports beat, that means they're writing all about sports, um, entertainment, all around entertainment. And so um, I would write that down in their, um, the, the notes section. And then once I have that set up, then you start to think of, okay, if we're using generation ratify as an example, think back to what we were saying, what, how we um, interpret generation ratify to be, what is generation ratify to us, right? And then think about how that connects with whatever that journalist is talking about. So if it's a politics beat, how is the journalist connecting with generation ratify within that, um, be and how is if it's if the if the organization is talking about youth advocacy okay what about generation ratify are we going to focus on to make sure that um to ensure that we are fulfilling the needs of that journalist so you it's all about positioning yourself make yourself put yourself into the shoes of the of the organization so it's your turn I am going to take you through a scenario and I want you to help me figure out which of these, I made these people up, but the, um, um, uh, which of these journalists, if you were Generation Ratify, if you were pitching this event, for example, um, if you were wanted to talk to them about um, all the work that we're doing, who would you talk to? So first on the list, we have from the New York Times, we have Jay Johnson, they use they them pronouns. They've never previously mentioned Generation Ratify in any of their work that they've done, but they write for a politics beat. Um, next up, we have Teen Vogue. We have Stephanie Smith, she uses she, her pronouns. Um, she covered the Georgia elections and, and mentioned Generation Ratify when talking about youth advocacy and stuff like that. And then we have Jeezy Magazine, we have Ricky Jean-Baptiste, he uses he, him pronouns, and he works for a small indie youth magazine. He's previously written about youth activism and movement journalism. Now think about what Generation Ratify is, what Generation Ratify stands for, and in the chat, or just speak up, where, who do you think, who would you talk to? Who would you be most interested in talking to? And maybe why? And I love, what's my, my mother actually just told me this, she was like, I love ragged and jagged ideas or half, I say half baked ideas. So please, there's no right answer here, but I would love to see who would you be most interested in talking to and why? And, and who, where do you think, uh, like, let's, let's have that discussion. Mm -hmm. I see, I'm seeing New York Times, I'm seeing Stephanie. Oh, I, I, I see, I see New York Times again, Teen Vogue, yes, I'm seeing a lot of, of of that oh new york times yes non-binding perspectives are very very important force um um yes exactly i love it i love to see it um and these are all exactly so right now right now you are thinking like a pr person so um the real answer ah Thank you. I, I, this is my power blazer. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so actually there is no right answer. I know. I know. Oh, I'm seeing, I am seeing Ricky in there. I, I, I think that's the first Ricky we've seen. And really there's, there's really no right answer. There are different reasons to talk to different people and there's pros and cons and the way that you're evaluating, um, the different people is how you want to evaluate the think critically about the journalists that you're talking to. So overall, you um for uh the new york times yes the non-binary perspective is so important to hear about the new york times is a huge break but also the new york times gets tons of pitches all the time from people who want to um who want to um get mentioned and then teen vogue again that previous relationship is excellent to build upon um but again it's hard to, it's hard to get there but but that's also another a great thing to evaluate and then gz magazine it's smaller it's so super focused hyper focused that's our niche and that's a great thing to do and so yes a uh, carmen uh, says shoot your shot and that is exactly what you want to do um overall um in a perfect world you'd actually pitch 
all of these people and you would you would send out send out those emails but i keep talking about pitching right i keep talking about pitching journalists talking to journalists but like how do you do that i don't do i not yes i actually don't anyway sorry <laughs> um but the pitch what is a pitch so just like a media list is a glorified spreadsheet a pitch is a glorified emails. Yeah, for my job, all I do is send emails all day. But um, overall, um, and a pitch is usually sent out through email. Most journalists prefer to um, get pitched through email, but it depends on who you're talking to. So sometimes they'll ask me for uh, pitched on social media, but primarily it is email. If their email is easily accessible, found on their Twitter or on their bio, um, on the publication that they work for, then you want to pitch them over email. If you can't find email, then Sometimes journalists will take pitches through Twitter DMs. That's the biggest one. And then Instagram as well. So overall, we're sending them these, these emails. And all these pitches can be sent on behalf of our organizations, but this can also be sent on behalf of yourself. So outside of our movement, outside of fighting for the ERA and, and fighting for, for uh, this, this advocacy work, um, also, if you're doing something super, super cool and you want the world to know about it, you can actually go and if you have, if it's newsworthy and you have a story, you can pitch yourself. Um, and I know that's, that's actually how uh, some people build their credibility in, in that way. But I, I wanted, um, I, I, in next up, we have the pillars of the pitch. Um, but I, I, I thought that that title was fun. Um, so in terms of pitching, you want to focus on two things your subject line and the content because the subject line gets them to open the email if you don't have a good subject line they're never going to see um they're never going to see uh any of the content that that you write and if you have um if your content is lackluster you're not going to get the story so for the subject line you want to make it catchy you want to make it concise and you want to make it personalized now remember at the the end of the day these people are people and they're just doing their job and you're trying to do your job and 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 really and further your movement and they just they they need a story that they want to the further things that they're passionate about so you want to make it catchy now catchy does not mean super out there and it depends on the publication that you're pitching so if you're pitching a publication like the new york times for example you would use something more straightforward whereas if you're pitching something that is like buzzfeed you might use something that is more fun and um but in the end you want it to be concise because you want them to get all of the information that they need to know about what you're going to tell them in those couple of words. So it takes some practice, but um, every every word should count. Every word should have a purpose. Um, and then finally, you want to make it personalized. Again, thinking about the publication, thinking about the journalist. Do your research. Find out the kind of stuff the journalist writes and the style of their writing, and then write your subject line in that style. A great place to look for this is headlines. Um, and you can use your, your subject line to mimic a headline. So I actually have some, some subject lines that I've actually used. Um, so for Generation Ratified, the first one says, Youth Activists Fight for Intersectional Equal Rights Amendment. So this publication that I was pitching is very straightforward, very um, to the point. And so I wanted my subject line to mimic that. But my subject line tells me exactly uh, tells them exactly what I'm going to talk about in my pitch. Youth act ad activists, well, fight for intersectional equal rights amendment. What are we doing? We're fighting for an equal rights amendment. Who are we? We're youth activists. And then what makes us different? We're intersectional. So you want to have those, uh, who are you, what you're doing, and why you're different, and why you're special in that subject line. Also, the fact that we're youth activists is just newsworthy in itself. But um, the second one we have up is, um, it says young activists fed up with same old white feminism start movement. Now there, I'm actually saying the exact same thing almost that I'm saying in the first subject line, but it's been changed in terms of the way it's said and the way it's written to fit the publication that I was pitching. So this was a publication that was more um, out there, more fun in a way, more instigatory. Their headlines were very instigatory. And so um, it says, so the, um, but again, we're young activists, that's who we are. What are we doing? We're starting a movement, we're fighting for this. And then um, what makes us different? It, we're intersectional, we're, we're, we're doing something outside of the white feminist narrative. Um, and then, 
the the last one is actually for podcasts. Now it's similar to the first one, but I use the word inspiring there, and that is because the podcast itself uses that word and uses that to um all over everything that they have all over their website and their content and that's in their mission so i decided to use that in the subject line to um to call back to that so that's where your research can play in and then in terms of content right once you get them to open open the email and i'm going to show you a couple examples of pitches but once you get them to open the email um you want to answer three questions who are you? Why are you reaching out to them? And what's the story? So you want to tell them who you are um, and who you are within the context of what they need and what they want. And then also who you are within uh, just your organization as a whole. But then why are you reaching out to them specifically? So I'll show you this in the examples, but it's a focus on um, uh like why you should read their articles ahead of time so no kind of stuff you write about and so why do you want them to write about you make them feel special and then what's the story of course and so um some hot tips i have that i've learned is never ever 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 attach anything unless you have a previous relationship with a journalist and they know who you are because these journalists actually get tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of emails a day and so oftentimes they'll get a lot of spam mail and they often have filters to feature, filter out um, attachments or just don't open attachments because they can have viruses. So they don't tend to open attachments, but you can link stuff. So I encourage like Dropbox, things like Google Drive, if they have a Gmail. Um, and so linking that link, linking stuff can, can be really useful. And then also link everything that you possibly think could be useful because it gives them the option to click rather than to have to ask you for more information. And I'll show you some of the stuff that I'm talking about in the examples. And then again, be a person first. You are talking to people who have very difficult jobs and they are, um, they are talking to tons and tons of people a day. So you wanna be kind, you wanna be respectful and you just want to be there to help them in a way that's also helping you, but <laughs> um, be that person first. So this is an example of a very, a very, very um, straightforward, straight to the point pitch. And I'm going to read it out loud and take you through it sentence by sentence. Um, so it says, hi, Tina. The, so the Senate is planning on introducing the new Equal Rights Amendment in a first day package on January 21st, marking a new future for ratification. Firstly, that happened. Yay, that was great. But um, that establishes the newsworthiness. So you want to know, okay, why, why they're like, why do I, why does this matter? And so we want them to know it matters because this is something that's timely, something that's being talked about right now. And this is something that's important. And then I go on to say, having read your previous intersectional gender and gender justice centered coverage, I'm writing to see if you would be interested in covering Generation Ratify, the youth led feminist movement fighting for the ratification of the ERA and intersectional gender equality in the US. Now that is a mouthful, but it, um, in that, those first two sentences, I've established why it is time, uh, why it's important. And then I've established, um, like why I'm talking to them. I'm answering that question. And um, in the links are actually linking back to, to the articles, which I did read. And, and so they can see which articles I'm referring to. And then um, I'm saying who we are, Generation Ratify, who we are as a concept, because I'm not pitching myself here. I'm pitching the, the movement. And this person, this is focused on the movement as a whole, because this person, um, writes about movements and, and such. And then next up, I um, the, in the next paragraph, it says, since the organization was founded in 2019, Generation Ratify has grown from one group in small town Virginia to over 50 registered chapters in 13 different states with over 4,500 different members. Wow. And then it goes on to talk about more stuff we've done. And so this is actually, it's not completely necessary, um, but it establishes credibility. So, um, so in this, it here um, um and when you're pitching it really helps to establish credibility in some way now mo a lot of organizations and generation ratify when we first started out didn't actually have this credibility yet and that's okay you can pitch yourself without having that credibility but when you do have those numbers it's it's really nice to put them in this pitch is actually on the longer side so you want to try and make it as short as possible to take up as least amount of time as possible and then i go on to talk about the feminist framework 
um, because this that's just something that I know this journalist would be interested based interested in based on the stuff that I've talked about before, and it also adds on uh, the the stuff that she's talked about before, but it also adds on to the um, it also adds on to the a newsworthiness. This is something that we're doing now. This is how we're making impact now. So you want to think about it. And then I say, okay, what can, how can I help you? How can I provide you with uh, help? And I talk about how um, the Generation Ratify founders, who we love, um, are available for interview um, and to share their unique perspectives. So this is what I can provide you and then, you know, learn more, da, da, da. And so next up, I have a second example, very different. So this is actually pitching a um, podcast and this this podcast uses a lot of colorful language it's very uh, out there um, very fun but I was able to use um, that kind of language in my pitch because that's what they talk about so for example I say two young teenage feminist badasses I would never write that to the New York Times but because of this it, I, I am able to use that kind of language because I did my research so you want to do that research um, in addition uh, this is an example of me pitching a person rather than pitching a concept a movement or an event now you can also pitch events you can pitch whatever you're doing, honestly, if there's something that's happening, you can do it. But for a podcast, I want to focus on um, uh, the, the pitching our wonderful executive directors. So um, overall, we really just, um, this just, it, it uses a lot of language that is more um, instigatory, but then also I link the, in the IUD for our rights, given unladylike, that's the podcast, go listen, emphasis on smashing the patriarchy and previous coverage of this IUD for our rights. Now, personally, I don't think Generation Ratified ever referred to, uh, the ERA as the IUD for our rights, but, um, they, that's the name of the podcast episode, which, that they talked about the ERA with before, and then, um, Based on that podcast episode, we are able to go on and provide a different perspective. So we would provide a perspective that's probably more intersectional and such. But um, in in that sense, I you take take what you have, take what you've seen, show that you want to talk to them specifically, make them feel special, and then um, and then uh, see how you fit into that. So. Again, we're going to have a little discussion. I don't know. I like conversation. I like hearing from y'all. But um, now coming back to our, our um, three journalists that we all have different opinions on, um, think about, okay, we call, call back to Generation Ratify as a concept, right? Um, in the chat, can you pop in? Um, if you were thinking about Generation Ratify, think about the events that you've gone to so far. If this is your first one, think about this thing, what I'm talking about right now, right? How do you think the, our event, how do you think Generation Ratify would relate to these journalists? Um, how, again, essentially, how would you pitch them? What's that angle? And try and think analytically. Think of, okay, what are the things when I think of Generation Ratify, I think of intersectionality, right? That's something that went in. Youth advocacy um the feminist revolution so how would that relate back to to each of these people um we i would point out that jay for example is in the politics beat now remember politics is like what the journalists um talk about so how does it relate to politics um the georgia elections covering a gr right so that's that's politics focus that's youth advocacy focus so how does gr relate to um youth advocacy and then again that movement journalism so what what parts of gr do you think you would i mean i said some of them so you could pop those in the chat but what parts of gr do you think you would highlight when talking to these journalists pop that in the chat remember half ragged and jagged ideas half baked ideas are the best the best kind advocate for pa exactly that we are passionate yes queer liberation the amicus briefs lobby days the youth yes that's very that's important non-binary issues exactly exactly so um 
And so with each person, you want to think about, okay, how, because again, we are trying, yes, we want to get our message out. Yes, we want to further the movement, but also we want to help them. And we want to make sure we're not wasting their time because again, they get a lot of messages. So we want to make sure that we're not wasting their time. But yes, these are all great things to highlight. So you, um, talk to them, you emailed them, you got an email back, they're like, okay, I'm interested, I want more information, or they'll ask, usually, actually, they'll ask for something specific, and then you can provide that to them, but you, um, you've got all of that, so now what, what do you do, I don't know, I get nervous talking, talking to press, right, so what do we, what do we want to do next, so when talking to press, what you should know, and what you should have in your head is, um, know your main objective, right? So what about what you're talking about? What about you? If you are just providing information or if you're interviewing, what about you do you want them to know? And what do you want to be, what do you want people reading their article and what do you, uh, to, to come away from it knowing? And so talk to, talk to them, make sure you're highlighting, highlighting that and highlighting what, what you really, really want them to know. And then um, know their main objective. So by this time, you should have done your research. I have researched three times because it's so important. Again, I want to emphasize, I can't emphasize enough how um, we want to make sure that we're not wasting anybody's time. So we want to make sure that we're doing our research and know their main objective. Why are they talking to you? So that angle doesn't go away once they start talking to you. They, once they, if they're talking to you for a reason, then you want to make sure that throughout the process that you're highlighting that reason and that you are um, uh, making sure that that is what is known and, and, and you're catering to that. Um, and then use that and match that with what you want to know and so and so beforehand do some reflection take some notes um and think about okay how can i match these two up how can i make sure that what i want to be known about my organization my movement myself is um being being portrayed accurately and then how um how I can help them and how I can make sure that I'm answering their questions and answering the actual question and not using that as a way to just push my own agenda. And so you do that through lots and lots of research and then also match the publication's tone. So you want to be, um, at this time you would have done a ton of research on the journalists you're talking to. You would have done a ton of research on your own, own organization or whatever you're talking about. And you would, um, want to then match the tone. So read their articles, see how, how they talk. If it's someplace where you can use colorful language, you can talk more casually, speak, dress, uh, depending on if you're in Zoom, you know, pandemics, but um, um, dress more casually, like see how you want to portray yourself based on how, how they portray and how they talk to people. And then something that's more like, um, I hesitate to use the word professional because I think that word is steeped in white supremacy, but the um, overall just thinking, think about what language you can use. Can, can you curse? Can you not? Like, think about that and, and make sure you come to the, the talk or the interview or you're just that communication prepared with that um, information. And then above all, they want to talk to you. They want to hear about your movement, your organization. If they've reached out to you afterwards, then um, they want to talk to you. So above all, be yourself, yourself. You are enough in all aspects. Actually, lesson of the day, you are enough, but also, um, just in this, within this context, you are enough. What you're talking about is enough and know that you're qualified. And if you aren't qualified, connect them to, to the person who you think it is, but you are qualified. Um, yeah. So overall, in the end, I want you to come up. Ooh, huh. Overall, in the end, I want you to um, come out of this with three main ideas and three main points in your head. So you want to do throughout the whole process, you want to be doing your research, 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 research. I can't say that enough. Make sure you know what you're doing um, and make sure that you are not wasting your time and, and, and that you uh, really know um, who you want to talk to and why you want to talk to them and then personalize it. Uh, make make them feel special and then also 
um, personalize uh, it to your organization or the movement that you're talking about. So make sure that everything is relating back to um, that. And then finally, tell your story. Um, let them know what they need to know. Let them don't be afraid to, to tell them uh, what you, what you want to tell them and, and get that across so you can get from that brainstorm to the front page call back to the title uh, anyway um but yeah um so as we close out this is my last little slide but um i want to highlight some resources that have really helped me um so there's only so much i can teach about media relations in an hour but um this is a course that's really helped it's a free course um that's provided by uh it's called muckrock academy it's the foundations of media relations course and you can take it at your own pace and it is a great um easy to understand and it's, uh, it's completely free and it also gives you a certification once you complete it and you can put it on your LinkedIn, which is exciting. But um, next up, I have Help a Reporter Out. This is a resource that has a free version so you can sign up for that. And they send you emails where journalists um, want, like they're looking for a story, they're looking for a specific thing. And this is somewhere where you can um, see where you match up with somebody else. So they'll put out looking for people to talk about women's empowerment or, um looking for people to talk about uh cheese i don't know but they there's like you find interesting things and so um you really want to uh that's a great thing to sign up for and you can you can find things that you probably wouldn't have and then they have quick turnarounds because it's for reporters who are on a deadline which reporters are also always on a deadline um and then hunter is a great a source it's a chrome plugin and you can um uh, it helps you find emails of, of people whose emails aren't as easy to find. So that's something that's helped me. And then Snowvio is anyone who knows me knows this is like my favorite thing ever, but it's an email tracker. So um, you can use it to uh, see when people have opened your emails um, and when they've clicked links in your emails. It's yeah. <laughs> um, and it's a great resource to see if journalists are opening your emails to see you can track it for yourself see what's working that i'm doing and what isn't working and then you can change things accordingly and also it helps for follow-up so for example you're emailing a journalist and they haven't seen your message you would follow up a different amount of times and if they have and they just didn't respond then you know they're maybe not interested so um yeah that's what I, I i have ready i'm going to stop sharing my screen and i would like to open the floor to any questions that anybody has? Um, yeah, I, I'm happy to answer and answer any questions. Yeah. Um, if there's any anything you want to know about oh the resources, yeah, I will pop them. Actually, I'll just I can pop them into the chat. Um, so you can, but the, the resources are Muckrack Academy, Foundations of Media Relations um, course, uh, I popped in the chat there, uh, Help Our Reporter Out, Hunter and Snowvio. So when would it be helpful, I see the question is, when would it be helpful to reach out to outlets that don't have similar values? So um, it all depends on how you want to be portrayed. So in terms of uh, just if you're doing something, if you're doing something huge, they're going to cover you anyway. But if, if you want to like specifically reach out to people, you can do that at any point. You just have to be aware that they may not represent you in the way that you want to be represented. So um, if, if there's a very specific message that you, or you're trying to get out or if there's a very specific way you want to be portrayed, then you can just, then I would suggest sticking with organizations and outlets that specifically represent those values but if you're if you just want people to know about you um then you can go to those other ones but for example a very conservative outlet is going to portray generation ratify uh fighting for these progressive movements and and fighting for like the equal rights amendment uh, very differently than a more um liberal or more uh progressive uh, uh outlet and publication in that way but it all honestly depends on your discretion and the organization that you work for or on just how if you're pitching yourself how you want to be represented yeah any questions any other questions is if you have any follow-ups yeah 
no problem. Wow. How did, how did I get started? Um, well, I went to school for, uh, I'm in school actually for PR right now, but um, I really, I found out I really, really love uh, storytelling. And I learned that really early. I, I talk a lot and I never shut up. So I was like, can I talk to people for a living? Sure. So um, I got interested in doing PR through, through realizing I was a storyteller. I decided to go study in school, but you really don't need to study it in school to be able to do that. Just get involved, get some experience. Um, uh, advocacy organizations like this one are a great way to get involved or just starting and practicing on your own. Um, but yeah, I just really love the idea of telling a story. I love connecting with people. I love um, finding um, people who who have to share ideas or share passions and connecting them to each other. So that's that's really how I, how I got started. Um, feel free. I mean, if anybody's interested, I love talking to to um, to people. Any good PR industry uh, in industries? Well, internships. Well, in terms of um, PR internships. Off the top of my head, well, the, the great thing to do, especially when you're first starting out, is a lot of smaller organizations and nonprofits need PR work done, but they don't have the ability to, um, to have a full-time staffer. So if you want to come on board, help with those, those are great places to apply. Any nonprofits, they usually have internships open, um, advocacy groups like this one. And then also, um, look at so there's i am um depending on where i go with my career i might go into agency life right and there you can go into like in-house where you're working with a specific organization or agency when you work with a bunch of different organizations and look up companies where you want to intern and instead and don't wait for them to post an internship opportunity but rather find people at the company who are doing what you want to do and email them and contact them on linkedin and say hey i'm here i'm a student this is what i do or i'm a person who does what i do um this is what i'm interested in can i talk to you can i have 15 minutes of your time and then come prepared with questions and do these informational interviews how i got really established and learned a lot of the stuff I do is by just reaching out to people who sounded cool. And, and the worst thing that they can say is no. So that's a great opportunity and a great way to find internships. A lot of companies and agencies will also post, like have a careers page and have an email for internships where you can apply even if they're off, not currently hiring, but they'll have your resume on hand. So um, yeah, professional development is also a passion of mine. So uh, I, I can pop my email in the chat and if anybody is interested, um, in learning about professional development, I, um, <laughs> I can, I can help you out with that. But, um, in terms of my dream job or something I hope to accomplish in my industry, well, uh, I don't know if I have a dream job, but I do know, hold on, um, I, I do know that for me, something that was, I was battling between going into something social justice related when I was going into the industry, uh, into college and stuff, or going into, um, a straight PR and I ended up taking the PR route, but I made a promise to myself that I would, um, I made a promise to myself that I would always use the skills that I'm learning in PR to help better the community around me. And so um, you'll find that whatever you end up doing, uh, you can really the cater your skills to that because there's always somebody who needs it. So my dream is to be um, doing something that's helping other people, honestly, and using PR move PR skills to make movements. Oh, what's it called? Not only great, but known. Um, but um, and um, and then also in terms of just my career itself, working in maybe an agency and working in a place that um, gives me a lot of things to do. I love to travel and stuff like that. So um, yeah, that's, that's, that's me. Um, any, other, any other questions, any last questions as we finish this up? <laughs> yeah, don't hesitate, please don't hesitate Wait, to reach okay, out. Okay, I, I have a question, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, I have been like on and off, so you may have already like addressed this. Um, and I feel like it's hard to talk about without a case example, but like, has there ever been a time where you felt like you kind of pushed a story through and then the representation didn't come out how you wanted? 
And like, if so, how did you kind of address that, I guess, with the source or at all? And if that hasn't happened, like, how would you? So like if a, a source printed a story, but it wasn't exactly what you thought was like the truth, I guess, or how you wanted to be painted. Well, okay. So there you can come, this actually, I haven't had to deal with this firsthand, but it can, um, it, uh, per, uh, yet in my career, but it happens to everybody at some point. And so what you want to do is, so in the end, it depends on who you're talking to. So if you're talking to a straight newspaper, straight media source, that's just writing an article and it's informational, then you can contact them, talk to them. That's a more, they're, um, in essence, trying portraying you as uh, as um uh, what's it uh there they should be just portraying you as is so that's something to contact them about and to talk about hey we don't feel like we were represented accurately and then you would move forward either making um like they they sometimes put statements at the bottom or it just is what it is um and then if it's like a magazine so if it's or if it's not something that's um like editorial edit I'm not using the right word, but if it's not something that is just that and more opinion based, then in the end, it, it is what it is. You can talk to them about it, but they there are they don't aren't like required to do any to make any changes. Um, something to have prepared too is because sometimes you'll get coverage without um, you'll ha get coverage without pitching because you'll just do something important and people will talk about you. And when that happens and something sometimes you're not portrayed the way you want to be portrayed, then what you have to do is have a crisis plan in place. So who are you going to talk to? How are you going to use your resources to show, hey, we're not like this. This isn't who we are. And um, so sometimes social media is a great way to do that or um, just having representatives speak out, giving interviews, stuff like that. So that's a general more crisis plan, which is a whole other um, seminar, <laughs> honestly. But um, in general, it's just good to have those in place. And um, you can look at a lot of organizations. Like if you look up organization controversy, you'll see articles that that's cover different things you can see how they handle it so um yeah that's that would lean into more crisis management and, and thinking about that but um overall just make sure you're being clear and um make sure that if if it does happen that you have a team or you just know have the message that you want to to, to have um in place at the forefront of your mind and try and put that forth yourself and then again talk to that have that individual relationship because sometimes sometimes it's not on purpose and and um you can just talk to that journalist and 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 depending on like your individual relationship with them uh figure that out yeah any any last questions anything else i'm glad i'm glad y'all are enjoying it um it was it was really fun to make this is i i love talking about this and as i said i never shut up so <laughs> yeah awesome now oh, well there's no more questions thank you for coming to this thank you for for checking it out um and <laughs> and please um check out those resources that were in the chat and um yeah, see what you see what you want to do and, and reach out also if if you need if you need anything or if you um if you uh, want any professional development resources and yes i think i believe the next event is at 4 p.m eastern yeah of course uh, yeah so i'm done ah, thank you guys thank you. thank you all you folks for coming yeah.